It was an emotional memorial service yesterday for the five police officers who were killed in a sniper attack that took place last week in Dallas, Texas. President Obama and former President George W. Bush both paid their respects to a huge crowd yesterday, and both of them called for unity. I understand how Americans are feeling. But Dallas, I'm here to say we must reject such despair. I'm here to insist that we are not as divided as we seem. And I know that because I know America. I know how far we've come against impossible odds. To renew our unity, we only need to remember our values. We have never been held together by blood or background. We are bound by things of the spirit, by shared commitments to common ideals. That's just some of what we heard yesterday. Deneen Borelli, chief political correspondent for the Conservative Review and a Fox News contributor. Deneen, welcome. Uh, good to have you good here morning, today. Good morning, Martha. You know, it felt uh, in President Obama's speech as if there were almost two parts. The first part was very unifying, and it's part of the message that we, we just played. Um, and then we heard those comments from President Bush yesterday, also very moving. We haven't heard from him uh, in, in quite a while, but obviously Dallas is very close to his heart. Your thoughts on, on each of those? Well, let me just say that our country is hurting right now, Martha, and our country is also very divided today. Uh, we have people that is, is divided politically and it's divided on the racial aspect. Yes, both presidents spoke about unity, but I got to tell you, President Obama went off the rails and he injected politics into this memorial service. And I think it was very disrespectful for him to do so, not necessary and unprofessional. He mentioned Trayvon Martin. He gave credence to Black Lives Matter. They are a radical organization for him to bring up Black Lives Matter at a, a memorial for individuals who were murdered because of someone acting out of, of hate and racism. And Black Lives Matter, again, they are a radical organization. There are seven police officers, including the two in New York, who were murdered because someone acted out on the rhetoric that they're hearing from Black Lives Matter. It is just absolutely outrageous. You know, it's clear from the comments that he's made over time that he is sympathetic to that group. And that yes. the underlying issue that he brings up connected to that is that he believes that being black in America is different, uh, is it a very different experience than being white in America. In fact, Newt Gingrich got a lot of credit a few days ago for saying that we need to have a better understanding of that. And, and the president talked about that too, that it's just, it's a different experience. What do you, what do you say to that? The tone comes from the top, Martha. Oh, everything is race about Obama. Somehow, some way. Black Lives Matter leaders were in the White House. Uh, uh, Al Sharpton has been in the White House more times than I can count. I mean, listen, it, the, the words that Obama, he, it's double speak. He says one thing, yes, we need to unite, and then he goes off the rails and talks about uh, the individuals that were shot last week. It's still under investigation. We don't know if it was racially motivated or not. He even made comments from Poland about that issue, and at the time he did not have all of the facts. Let's listen to a little bit of the, the president's speech, which was toward the end, which is was sort of felt like a different speech when he kicked into this part of it. Let's watch a, a moment from that. We flood communities with so many guns that it is easier for a teenager to buy a Glock than get his hands on a computer or even a book. Easier for a teenager to get his hands on a Glock than a computer or a book. You know what he doesn't want to address? The fact that the shooter in Dallas said he wanted to kill white people, said he wanted to kill white police officers, and Obama shifts the blame and direction about guns. Does not want to come out to talk about the words that this individual actually said. He said that it was hard to untangle his motives, actually. Right. He doesn't want to go in that direction because that will blow away his narrative that we have this huge racial problem in America, that Americans are, are, are rampantly racist and black Americans have targets on their you backs. Know, let me ask you this, Janine, because I remember standing on the convention floor and we're about to head to another convention this afternoon. Yeah. And he Hearing Senator Barack Obama, and he really moved that crowd in Boston, and obviously it resonated across the country because it was the beginning of, of his ascent to the presidency. Yeah. And he said, we're not a black America. We're not a white America. 
were the United States of America. I couldn't help yesterday wishing that he would repeat that line sure. in front of that crowd. What happened to that line? He's a community activist first, then he's president. Did he and not mean it when he said it in Boston all those years ago? I don't understand. He wanted to get elected. That's the way I see it. It's a vote-buying scheme, a vote-buying mechanism to, to scream, to, to, to use race is a way to drive, especially black voters, to vote. And Democrats, with this election, they are having low turnout with the primaries. So they're very concerned about a turnout for black voters with this upcoming election. And I think more and more we're going to be hearing about race, which is not good for our country because it's dangerous. And we've seen that. We see what's happening now across the country. Do you believe he's stoking the fire rather than... He's been stoking it from day one. Janine, thank you. Uh, it's disheartening. It is. Uh, at best, if that's the case. Thank you very much. It is right about 9.30 here now.